Hey, what's going on guys? I just wanted to make a video here. Um, I had the rear brake bleed. I had a couple people asking me to make a video on how to make bleed the uh, front brakes on a Banshee. So I'm just going to do a quick video. It's super easy. It's just like doing the back brakes. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. Alright guys, so what you'll need for the project is either DOT3 or DOT4 brake fluid, whichever you choose to use. Um, this is just an old brake fluid can that I used to dump our uh, old fluid into. It doesn't have to be a brake fluid can, it can be any kind of can. Clear tubing. This is quarter inch outer diameter. Um, has to be clear so they can see if there's any bubbles coming through the line. Uh, in 99% of cases, an 8 millimeter wrench to open up your bleeder valve. Either a um, Phillips or flathead screwdriver, uh, depending on what's your master cylinder, and your Gorilla mask. Now that we have all our tools in order, we're just going to make sure we have our bike on a level surface. Um, if you're doing a dirt bike, it's a good idea to maybe put it up on a bucket or something. And the reason I say that is because your master cylinder is up on the handlebars. You just want this to be as level as possible with the ground. If you if you have the bike tilted to the side or on uneven ground, uh, when you open it up, you're liable to lose some brake fluid. It's going to be running down the handlebars and stuff, and it's going to be a mess. Um, and plus, if you want to fill it up to the correct fill line, you want to have the bike e uh, even. Um, now, as I mentioned in my other video, brake fluid can be corrosive. So when we open this up, there might be some fluid that leaks down, plus we might spill some fluid when we're filling it up. And I don't want to get any fluid on my plastics or my pipe or anything. Um, like, uh, like I said, it's corrosive, so it can actually eat through paint and all. But anyways, um, it's just a good idea to take like a towel, a drop cloth or something, and um, you know, throw it over any kind of parts that you don't want to get any brake fluid on. Okay, so now that we have our area masked off, first thing we're going to do is remove our reservoir cap. Um, you may have Phillips head screws up here, or you may have flat, and a lot of times these get jimmied up really bad, and you might have trouble getting them loose. Um, these, you know, these these heads get stripped out. Um, they actually were stripped out really bad on this one, and I didn't record it. I wish I had. Um, I do have some tips and tricks to get these off. Uh, for now, you know, we'll save that for another the next time I get a bike where they're they're jacked up. I'll take I'll take a video showing how I got them out. But for now, we'll just assume that we can get them out. So we're just going to gently break these loose. You really want to be careful with these because you don't want to strip them out and get in a situation where it is a pain in the ass to get them out. Make sure you don't lose those screws. So we're just going to pull our cover off and our bladder should be under there. Yeah, and you can clearly see this fluid needs to be replaced. So just take this and put it someplace that you're not going to get any other uh, brake fluid on anything. So now if your fluid's clean and you don't need to replace it, you don't have to worry about this step. Um, but this fluid is pretty murky and dark, so I want to get it out of there. I'm not going to completely purge the system, but I want to get this dirty um, fluid out of the reservoir. And there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, you can take a baster, which is, you know, it's like a, it's got the bulb on the end, you can squeeze it, and it'll suck the fluid out, but a lot of people don't have them sitting around, especially to put brake fluid in them. So I'm going to show you a second way to do it, it's real easy. Just grab a paper towel, fold it up, and you stick the end in there. And let that sit for a minute, and it's going to soak up all the excess brake oil in there. And um, you might have to do it once or twice, and then you can take a Q-tip and rub it around the inside, and that'll get all the uh, dirt and grit and stuff out of the corners and everything. And you want to make sure you don't pump your brake after you've taken the fluid out, because what you're going to do is you're going to suck air in. If there's no fluid in the, in the reservoir, when you pump that brake, it's going to suck in fluid, or, or suck in air, and that's what we're trying to purge out of the system. So once you take this fluid out, don't pump your brake until you put new fluid in. Now we're going to take our new fluid, and you should use new fluid, um, only because moisture can get in the brake fluid, even this brand new fluid. Um, you should use a new can every time. I'm going to be frank with you, I don't usually do that. I seem to be okay, but you should use a new can. That's what you know, the manufacturers recommend that you do, just so that there's absolutely no moisture in the brake fluid at all. But in this case, um, we're just going to use this can here. Fill it up pretty high. 
past where the reservoir says to fill to because we're going to be sucking a lot of that fluid in. All right, so now let's get to the actual bleeding of the brakes. So we're at our front left tire, or front right rather. We're going to pop this little rubber cap off of our bleeder valve. We're going to put our clear hose right on top of the bleeder valve. And then you want to take the other end of your hose and run it into your overflow jar. All right, so now we'll start bleeding the brakes. We got our eight millimeter wrench. It fits on here nice and easy. I'm just gonna break it loose, make sure that this isn't super tight. This one is super tight. You guys want to break these loose ahead of time because that you, you don't want to have to be doing that when uh, you're squeezing the brake. And also I do like to put the wrench with the box end on and uh, then put my hose on. Just makes it a little easier I think. So we're going we're gonna to pump the uh, handbrake. You pump it you know, until you get nice firm pressure and then hold it. And while you're holding it, we're going to open up our valve and that's going to push fluid through and we'll probably see bubbles and you know, dirty fluid come through. And we're going to do that as many times as we can until we don't see any more bubbles coming through. So this side's done. So make sure that your bleeder valve is nice and snug. And you can remove your hose, pull off your wrench, and we'll put our rubber cap back on. And now we're going to move to the left side. Remember, too, to keep an eye on your fluid when you're doing this because the last thing you want is to be doing this and you start sucking air in, and you're going to have to start all over. Now, the left side can be a little tricky just because it's further away from the master cylinder. Uh, if you have a buddy to hold or pump the brake for you, make it a lot easier. But nevertheless, we'll find a way to do it. So we'll just crack this loose. Make sure that they're manageable. Put our hose on. And we're just going to run through this the same way that we did with the other one. Uh, it's just going to be a little bit of a stretch. Okay, so my brakes feel really nice and firm now, so I'm going to go ahead lock up my bleeder valve, make sure it's nice and snug, take my hose off, put our cap back on, wipe off any excess brake fluid, so now that our brakes are properly bled, just want to come up here, make sure that your fluid, by the way, look how much cleaner that is than it was before. Um, you want to make sure that your fluid is about at the right height. You can see they tell you on here about where it should be. I think I'll put maybe just a tad bit more in, but otherwise, um, I think we're good. Um, so now we're just going to take our, take our bladder and our reservoir cap. You can clean these up if you want. Um, these you can pull out and you can wipe them down with a rag. You can wash them if you want. Just make sure that when you before you put them back in, if you wash them with water, make sure that there's an absolutely no water left on them because you don't want to get water in your brake, brake fluid. So now we're just going to pop our bladder on. Put our master cylinder cover on. And then we'll put our screws in. And 
And remember, you don't want to go just snug these. These don't need to be super tight. That's how you make a mistake and then you wind up stripping the bolts. Alright guys, so that's it. Pretty simple process to do. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you're looking for more stuff on Banshees, make sure to check out my other videos. Uh, right now I'm going to be working on this KX project. Um, I got my new cylinder back. I had sent it out for reseal. Um, so this week I'm going to be working on this project. I should finish this up. It's going to be pretty sweet. So make sure to stay tuned for that. In the meantime, check out some of my other videos. Once again, thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot, guys. I'll see you in the next video. And guys, just so you know, this applies to pretty much, you know, 99% of ATVs with hydraulic brakes. Um, some ATVs, you may have to remove certain parts to get to the bleeder valves, but in most cases, they put them in a spot so that you can do it with the uh, wheels and tires on. The bike that we did it on today is a 1990 Yamaha Banshee.